Everybody, here we are here at Toy Wizards, and we're doing a very special interview with the you know the guys behind the scenes of our favorite collection, the Power Rangers Lightning Collection. And uh, why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves? Hi, Hi. I'm John. I'm. <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> All right, I'm John. I'm the design director, uh, working on Power Rangers as well as several of our Hasbro's beloved brands. You gotta love these virtual conferences and interviews. Uh, I'm also John. I work on Power Rangers on the marketing side. I don't know how I'm gonna keep that clear while I'm talking. <laughs> you could call me Firestone and you make call it easy. me Warden. <laughs> okay, we're doing code names now. We're using our made up names. That's <laughs> yeah, like GI Joe. <laughs> All right. I mean, obviously, all of us tuned in for PulseCon. It was a great two days of incredible programming. I really thought overall Hasbro really upped the game for this year. And uh, I think we're starting to get into a, a better pattern of how you guys really just bombard announce us with so much stuff. We can't even keep our pre-order fingers going fast enough with all the stuff that's coming well, out. Well, thank you. We appreciate that. We work very hard on PulseCon, so it's good to hear that you guys are enjoying it more and more. Um, I, obviously, I have got my little pad of notes here. Um, some of the stuff I'm always super excited about was deluxe figures. And, oh, man, do I love deluxe figures. Um, the monster scale that you guys have been putting out has just been the best thing ever. It really, really has. Um, I have a long, long history with Power Rangers, brands, companies that make this stuff. And my biggest thing was make monsters, make monsters, make monsters. <laughs> and <laughs> And you guys are finally doing it. You're really, really doing it. And you're making them in scale. You can see there's a dude in that suit by this, the size of that figure. <laughs> and that's exciting. That's really, really exciting. And with uh, PulseCon, we got two new monsters. We got Huggy Pig. It's a deluxe lunchbox set with a bunch of extra accessories. And, of course, he's a very lovable villain. Um, Fun note, I even had his nose in my backyard for a long, long time. <laughs> the actual pudgy nose? Yeah, I, I wow. had some props from the series, and at some point they had destroyed him and then made the <laughs> nose to make some sort of bulk and skull detective sniffer or whatever. And uh, yes, the <laughs> nose was in my yard for a long time. Um, and, and then Piranha's Head, which is another just really great figure. It's a homage to the kind of vinyl figure we had, you know, in the original line. And it, we have a, an updated version of both of those are just fantastic. And tell me that you have plans for more monsters. <laughs> well, we, we can't confirm or deny future plans, but we can say that Deluxe is is. Uh, the perfect vehicle to allow us to do more monsters like that's that's the entire reason and inspiration behind coming out with this new line and this new price point it's it's bigger so it allows us to do those bigger monster figures in the future if we want to or do uh other plus ups whether it's like you you mentioned the the vehicles or battleizer or armor ups or any of those unique expressions that are so iconic to power rangers that you can't fit within the normal mainline lightning collection so there's so many bikes and <laughs> yeah or just big big characters that aren't quite so big that they're via the, yeah there it's a yeah. great place to do that and to they speak got, again to the great monsters at one point where they're like yeah every person needs to have a set of giant butterfly wings yeah. you know, armor and, you know, that stuff was made you know it's true. It's it's well, everyone it's, does need a set of armor or wings. <laughs> um, but I think when we look at the the breadth of uh, monsters out there, we're looking for those shared experiences. Like you know, you mentioned Pudgy and the weirdness of him, and the and the but the also the oddly lovable nature of him. 
there's also the, because they're monsters of the week. Some of those resonated um, more strongly because they there was a figure that came out, a figural expression that came out around the same time. So there's there's like this uh, common love, like an unspoken um, endearment towards specific monsters and what made them popular. And our design team is kind of and marketing team is kind of weaving in some of what the, what what fans feel are are their common beloved monsters and some of those may not necessarily be ones you know pumpkin rapper is a great example where it's not like in tons of episodes but like paranta said for example is a great is a great one because um you know people were afraid of paranta said or they they thought it was ridiculous that he had fish nunchuck flutes and there's like everyone should have a pair of fish nunchuck they really should <laughs> yeah well they're fish nunchuck flutes too yeah, it's, it's basic self-defense you should have a pair yeah you know nunchuck flutes <laughs> um but no it's it's great the deluxe assortment too is just a great way to add variety to your collection so you've got and the art on the packaging is so cool and it's just it's a it's a great way to kind of add an, an extra layer of dimension and you spoke to scale too i think some of it is fantasy scale some of it is a real scale if you think about like um, the Megazords in the show, they had a certain look. They were a guy in a suit with the, with the mask and, and, you know, incredible actors inside. But when we look at the different renditions of Megazords over the years, some of them are more like what you saw in your mind's eye as a kid versus what was actually on camera. So I think some of the monsters that we've done, in ca they, they encapsulate that, that mind's eye, while others, like maybe Finster, are a little bit more one-to-one. -one because you want him to be a specific scale or Zed, you know, or those types of guys. So as we evolve, it's sort of a, we look at what the fans want and we're going to kind of craft that into what the future deluxe office offerings might be. Yeah. You guys had uh, sent me a box of goodies and in that box was a Finster and it is a He's superb cool. figure. It is really, <laughs> really superb. Um, I, I tell you, I almost don't even want to buy just the Power Rangers. I only want bad guys now because <laughs> yeah, they're, they're so good. They're really you guys good. are talking about <laughs> Loretta's favorite are, are the bad guys too. She's super into the bad guys. Yeah, they're really really <laughs> nice. Well, they're they're very different, so they're kind of fun to figure out and do. It's like a nice break from doing the Rangers. Yeah, yeah. It's it's there's, there's such there's a, a lot wealth of detail yeah. in Finster alone. You know, like. His glasses are a separate piece, and they're just a little blurry. And you're like, "Oh man, look at that! He's nearsighted on top of everything." You know? I know. And he's also part plant, which is yeah. nuts. Like, I, and I, you're looking at him, he's like, he's got plants. Tiny situation. little twigs. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. great. It Corey looks, was it, really getting in there. Like, we would have meetings where, like, we're all we're all in, you know, in in this Zoom. Uh, Microsoft world. Teams environment world, right? And and we're like zooming in on. Finster's like side of his face and looking at a certain twig or, you know, it has things changed during molding consider like, well, we're gonna have to lose the small leaf. We're gonna have to make it small. Like, wow, this is my job. We're looking at leafs on Finster. It's fantastic. I, I, I think he's more of like in a turnip family, you know. I like think a, he might be right. Yeah, like a yeah, like he's a like a root vegetable. Yeah. Uh, that's a little more <laughs> it goes with the Japanese folklore of those kind of uh, plants interesting yeah so on on with deluxe figures because uh we also get a vehicle which isn't our first vehicle for the lightning line but it's a new where, where you're you're teasing us that we could probably start getting more vehicles and teams of vehicles and that, you can't acknowledge that but i certainly want to hope that you won't just tease us with one we will get full sets as these things come out like you said, I, I can't I can't tell you what our specific plans are, but I could, can say that that's our hope and that's what we like to do. And that's something that we're going to strive to do. <laughs> no <laughs> winks. <laughs> just just straight up. We we like the vehicles, too. You know, like, you know, we're fans as well. So these are these are cool things that we're trying to figure out the best way to get get out onto shelves. Nudge, nudge. Say no more, my friend. <laughs> yes. Um, with with these announcements, we also got to see the next wave of Power Rangers Lightning Collection figures. And I'll do a little rundown. Dino Fury Red, the first Dino Fury figure for the Lightning Collection. Um, again, sculpt is great. These figures also have that 
armored helm that just looks so good. Oh like, yeah, that costume's detail. really great. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, these are some of the best um, Power Ranger costumes we've had in years. Is yeah, Dino they're Fury. super. They're, they're super good. Really nice. Um, a cog single pack. And if anyone ever says, "How many cogs do I need?" the answer is, you can never have a cog. <laughs> and and, and you now just just confirm with me because I haven't seen it in hand. The silver looks different than the silver from the two pack. It is, yeah. The silver, it's it's slightly different. There's actually a transparent material on the chest. The previous two pack guys kind of had a deco situation on their chest, which mm -hmm. emulated that glitter kind of lame fabric that they look had. The spandex. Yeah, and um, the uh, the the new ones had sort of a clear torso where you could sort of see their inner workings a little bit in their arms, which is, we wanted to make sure it wasn't just literally the same figure, so fans had a reason as their troop building to kind of have a militia of these different oh, oh bonds, and we you need know. troop build for the machine empire i mean th th there was a, we need a yeah lot yeah like you can machine empire man giving us cog. <laughs> yeah there's um you know and that's another you know more monsters and villains that we would love to see the machine empire had some oh those guys are weird <laughs> they might be the weirdest of all the power rangers <laughs> yeah <Which is> saying <laughs> something. yeah um and then we got the Luna Wolf Ranger. Very nice to get some Wild Force uh, representation there. It's got, and it's got the pie, it's got the claw. Dino Charge, yeah. Yeah, that was very, that's nice because all of Wild Force were very much into very good hand movements for their, oh, yeah. for their fighting poses. And you put that into the figure, which is just fantastic. Lovely little bit of detail. And it shows that you guys care for us, the fans, for this kind of stuff. So we, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, and then we got Pudgy Pig as a uh, PulseCon exclusive. And uh, if you blink, you missed it. He's uh, just too good. Um, that's a very <laughs> nice figure. And he comes with a taco, too, which is incredible. And, and nachos. <laughs> you can feed him. You can feed him. Yeah. That's great. He can take your lunch. I feel like a pie fell out of his mouth on on the stream it's too. True. It's true. It did. That's yeah. very true. Yeah. Once That's you get great. the hands on the packaging too, you'll see it's made of like a really nice, sturdy, almost like a game board material with mm. a magnetic clasp, and so it's like it's really satisfying to take it out. And you've got the um, sort of like a placard to put behind him if you want to take some some glamour shots of him, if you will. Uh, but <laughs> now he's he's a lot of fun. He's a cool figure. I, I always really enjoy deluxe packaging. Like anybody can have a toy with just on a card, but when you get the deluxe packaging, so much more thought went into making something look fantastic and how it is it open up? Does it multi-form? How good is it for photos? And I think you guys really hit those aesthetics with the lunchbox idea for this exclusive. Yeah, it even has a little lunchbox handle too, which is yeah. hilarious. And in Japan, huh. any box that has a handle means quality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was told that. Like, oh yeah, the, the, the big box. Whenever there was a handle on it, that meant a little extra. Is that they put the handle on that big box? It meant quality. So wow, that was a, a little <laughs> something. Whenever you make big boxes for anything, put a handle on it just to you know, just like hey, just this, this is better. Sets yeah, it off. It does. Lord Zed helmet. Um. Can you talk me through how you decided to just go to right field and give us a work? Take it away, John. <laughs> well, it was a little bit of um, a couple different things, you know, doing something a little bit different from our normal lightning collection ranger helmets. It, it just felt like that was a creative direction we wanted to stretch, but it also lined up perfectly in terms of our planning on the franchise the studio side as well, because we knew that Zed was coming back uh, for a Halloween episode on Dino Fury, we knew that he was uh, really going to be showing up again. So it just timing lined up perfectly to really get him back out there. And especially with uh, Boom Comics doing the origin story as well, it's just all Zed all the time right now. So it's, it's definitely the season of Zed. It's, it's the season, season of Zed. Zed. It's, yeah. season. it's like all Zed's day. Return I... of the Living Zed. <laughs> I, and, uh... I can. You know, it's great. Zed, a character like Zed is so iconic, too. And um, 
when John and I and, and Joe were talking about, you know, things that we really want to bring to this brand, bringing the powerful villain um, presence is super important because it, you can't just have a bunch of rangers. Like, you have to have somebody to fight against. And, and something about Zed transcends uh, even generations. Like, you, like I, I was in... I was in college in the 90s and I was, you know, listening to hip hop and skateboarding and stuff like that. But I still remember Zed because I remember like my friends, little brothers, like watching the show and like, what the heck's up with that dude with the exposed brain and like in his voice He's and things like, like and chrome. So and iconic, right? And it's like, it's, it, there, there are just characters that just stick around. And we're convinced that Zed is that way too. I think fans are also convinced based on the awesome reception of this thing. But it is a complicated item to do. I mean, it's got a voice changer. It's got um, metallic plating on the face. It's got a spongy brain that you can actually like touch the brain. I didn't uh, think it, that would happen. That would really blew me away. I expected that brain just to be hard plastic. And nope. no, you made a squishy brain. Everyone's gonna wear that helmet and go, "Hey, when it touched my brain, and it's <laughs> <laughs> uh, making sure that it was squishy enough was important. It could not be just hard plastic, and uh, that was something that took a couple rounds. <laughs> there was squish tests. That's yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, we the, the first five, time it's do... what not squishy enough. We're gonna, gonna do squish some squish tests today after lunch. You know, you see how that brain is. Not spongy and gross enough. <laughs> and it's big, too. I don't know if you can tell, but, like, we had to put a stem inside of the helmet in order to, the helmet uh, uh, stand in order to take the size of it. Yeah. Um, when I first, because we're working in a COVID environment, we're, we're being safe and being at home and stuff. We, when I finally saw this thing in the office, I was surprised. And I think all no, it, it is how it is physically very... big it is. It's huge. Again, I have some of the original pieces, and it is wow. very large uh, because it was meant to fit on. Compared to most of the uh, props that are made for Power Rangers, which are made for small Asian stuntmen, this was made for a large American stuntman, and therefore that helmet had to fit on a full-size six-foot, you know, foot person, and that's <laughs> why the Lord Zed helmet is so large. Yeah, it's it's really really cool. Wait till wait till you get it too. It's really I can't it's wait. It, my, it's been pre-ordered. I, you know, I'm just I'm just waiting. Just, <laughs> every day at the door, where's my Lord Zillman? <laughs> where is going to be here? Oh, wow! You you guys have really knocked this stuff out of the park. Um, is there any hints that you can give us? You know, before they they click a button on you. What what else can we expect? Because you, you every time we we don't expect something, you throw something new at us. Well, but, I think um, we're super excited about the Zord Ascension project. So definitely stay tuned for the next drop of information. I got on my that. coin. I got my coin. It, it's oh, so you got your your coin through the uh, offering. Great. Um, and and our mainline offering is going to be fantastic. And we're going to have more information soon later this uh, later this year. And we'll be able to talk about uh, that project a little bit more in depth. We're really excited for that fu the future of that, that entire segment. So definitely stay tuned there. Yeah, I mean, certainly it's been something that everybody has wanted was a deluxe Megazord. Uh -huh. And not only do you show off a new deluxe Megazord, but you double down and give the ability to get a black and gold version, which is traditionally <laughs> for Christmas is the black and gold deluxe packs or is a Christmas gift. Um, and so Christmas came early. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas came early and not only are we getting new Megazords, but there's already two new Megazords that are in the works and it looks really nice. It, it, that, that Megazord has a fantastic scale functionality and it really looks if people have been waiting and, and saving money in that megazord or or pudgy pig piggy bank uh, <laughs> for a megazord these are the megazords to buy obviously yeah it, it to speak for a minute on those what's really remarkable is that they are um when i first started with the team on power rangers we were all pretty new to the team we were researching all the different mecha from the history of 
Power Rangers. And there's so many good ones. So many that are like from seasons that are unexpected. You know, the Rangers might look one way, but but the Megazords are something really, really special. And morphing and scale were two things that always came to mind. So when we thought thought about our design vision on this, we wanted to make sure that we paid off both its spades. That we're gonna really have the best uh, morphing um, steps. So there's an intricacy to it. So there's a, a respect given to both the articulation and the morphing, but also bring to life a scale, which is something that had never ever been done on on, on Megazords before. And oh, no. trying to I figure out and. Making Here it my into the arm just went up. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's great, <laughs> right? And, and one one forty fourth scale is is a popular modeling scale, so Absolutely. it's entirely possible to get set dressings and objects, or maybe other robots, to to fill out your universe on shelf. And um, it just worked out that you know the the Dino Megazord in, in its in its mammoth scale, like it it looks right. It and when you yeah. put it next to buildings. It's really, really exciting, and and like John said, there's more to come on that. But as you start to really dive into the details and the nuances and the articulation of that guy, it's it's there's <laughs> we're it's, we're just barely opening up the 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 heat seal on that guy to and, and oh, smelling man. the delicious wonderfulness that's inside. That's that's really really exciting. I'm I'm a huge robot fan. In oh, fact, me too. I watched. Yeah. Power Rangers just to watch the robots and monsters fight. Like, you know, yeah. I didn't care about the juice bar. I just wanted to see robot <laughs> fights. And uh, so this really has me excited. I can't wait to see what new stuff comes down the line with this project, with the lightning collection, with more monsters. Um, and again, thank you guys. You've been really hitting it out of the park. This stuff has been great and you've really shown that Hasbro has commitment, Power Rangers and Power Ranger collectors, and you will be getting us what we want. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank and you, and Scott. let's hope that uh, we can do this next next time in person at a Power Morphicon or something like that. It would be great. Power Morphicon is coming August 26th, 7th, and 8th, 2022. So wow. we're going to have an in-person Power Morphicon in 2022. So exciting. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, guys. Take care. Please follow us on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and like and subscribe to these videos so we can keep bringing you such great content. Oh, so. Uh, no, the. Yes, my queen. I'll lead them down and make the earth yours, Empress. Ha! <laughs> Voltron was needed once more.